Welcome to the Unlock Podcast, an innovative approach to human development. My name is Amanda, and today I am joined by Dimitri Dumont, who's coach and therapist at Radiant Leadership, founder and managing partner of Cross Fertilization, L&D lead consultant for Unlock, and an expert on emotional intelligence. Dimitri, welcome. <laughs> welcome to our podcast. Would you like to briefly add anything to uh, to your introduction? No, you did it very well. Indeed, uh, I'm expert in emotional intelligence because uh, you will see that emotions are extremely important. Okay, so let's just dive in. Today we're talking about emotional intelligence and who better than our very own Dimitri Dumont uh, to discuss this topic. A brief intro on emotional intelligence is uh, otherwise known as emotional quotient or EQ. This is the ability to understand, use, and manage your emotions in positive ways, to relieve stress, communicate effectively, um, empathize with others, and overcome challenges. How would you define emotional intelligence, Dimitri? Yeah. But, you know, emotional intelligence is, in fact, your capacity to adapt yourself to any different person and to any different circumstances. So emotional intelligence is your capacity to develop trustful relationship with yourself, with others, and with your environment. So how would you define, uh, like, great that we now know what is emotional intelligence, but could you explain what is an emotion? Yes, and you are right to start with that because indeed it's the most important. So when you spell emotion, you can just read another word inside emotion, which is motion. Motion means movement, to move. So indeed, an emotion is literally what a human being needs to move. And what do we need to move? We need energy. So what is an emotion? It's the human being adaptive energy. And this is why we need to move because we need to adapt ourselves constantly to any person, to any circumstances. And this capacity is extremely important to not to manage, but to master. I will explain it later. Okay, no, yeah, we're, uh, I'm very, very interested in this topic specifically, and especially because you go so in depth with everything that is uh, relevant. And this is a really nice connection uh, that you're making here, you know, like that is energy and energy, you know, it transforms and 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 expands uh, across people, across countries, mm -hmm. across the globe. Um, and this is one of the ways that uh, we can actually uh, implement it, right? Like we do digital practices and, and in Unlock, we specifically do transmit this uh, emotional uh, intelligence. So following up with that, uh, what would be uh, main indicators of someone that would have a high EQ? Someone who has a high EQ is someone who is radiating a nice energy and who is offering to other people psychological safety and the space to be different, welcoming others' differences with curiosity and not considering differences like a threat. Yeah. Someone with high EQ is someone also who is capable to really connect himself or herself to his own emotion, but also to the other's emotions. And to make what I call, to make our emotions something useful, useful for the relationship, relationship with myself, relationship with others, relationship with the world. So how to make our emotions useful? This is the principle of emotional intelligence in order to create trustful relationships. Okay, that is so interesting that you cross, like you you cross there also adding psychological safety. We've already done episodes on psychological safety, and I think this conversation can go on forever. But it's more so what you're what you're talking about here, the quality that the individual possesses in order to enable emotional intelligence yeah. through a psychological safety space, correct? 
But you know, emotional uh, uh, intelligence is related to three main qualities. The first quality is what I call authenticity, meaning your capacity to share genuinely your emotions and your feelings with other people. And also to consider the role of your vulnerability in the intensity of your reactions. So you must be aware of yourself and you must be aware of your own vulnerability. The sensitive nerve, which is putting all the intensity of our emotions in a rate where it's difficult to make them useful. The second quality is once you are authentic with people, afterwards you need to be curious. So curiosity is the second main quality that you are going to develop with high level of emotional intelligence, meaning that you take any differences in front of you as something to explore and not as something to be afraid of. And this is your capacity to ask questions and to explore people in front of you. And then the third quality is maybe the most beautiful one. It is what I call the humility. To be humble means that we are, we have the right balance between our self-confidence and our self-esteem. Meaning that we are all the time someone who is posed and, and, and stable because if we are jeopardized on our self-confidence, it's not a problem to make a mistake. We, are, we have sufficiently value of ourselves to learn about it. And if we are jeopardized on our self-esteem, feeling criticized, we have sufficiently capacity with our good self-confidence to stabilize it. So once you are stable with your self-confidence and your self-esteem, you develop humility, meaning this, this capacity just to be yourself, not with no need to, to win something or to convince people or to oversell it yourself but just being yourself and it's okay that is uh such an insightful way and such a summarized way to put uh emotional intelligence kind of like in three boxes you know authenticity uh curiosity and humility so thank you so much for that uh kind of brief summary of how can people also uh introspect and uh you know kind of be become more self-aware if they're actually enabling within their self uh, a high eq So what would be benefit like what well, what are the benefits let's move on to the more corporate or or organizational way of thinking on uh, emotional intelligence so what are the benefits of having either employees or leaders with a high um EQ um as i mentioned a uh, high EQ allows you to develop trustful relationship and you know when you are Uh, facing a lot of different teams and people and you ask them what is lacking in your organization why don't you feel comfortable or secure enough in your organization or in your job the answer the lack of trust so of course once you have this trust and you feel that you are accepted with all your difference with high curiosity welcomed with high curiosity and you give the best of yourself so this is extremely important because we want people committed you know and you ask to leaders how do you see your staff i want people highly motiv motivation uh, with high motivation with a uh, high commitment with a uh, full engagement with uh, incredible energy So the question you may ask is, okay, how do you offer energy to people? So the best way to energize people is to develop your EQ. Mm. Because EQ is your capacity to have the right energy and to offer the right energy to people that they will give you their best energy. And if you relate that to leadership, you know, if you take the definition of leadership, leadership is your capacity to motivate, to empower, 
to uh, inspire people that they accept to go out of the zone of comfort and they face the challenge you offer to them. Meaning that you are just all the time requesting more energy to people to be more performing. Energy is everywhere. Energy is everywhere in the organization. We need energy to create added value. We need energy to be inspirational. We need energy to be creative. We need energy to be imaginative. We need energy to go out of our zone of comfort and to think out of the box. So it's an essential quality for the organizations and for the leaders to have this capacity to offer the best energy to people. So um, flipping the coin, the, the, the other side of the coin, what if there's a lack of, so like, what if, what if there's a lack of awareness around emotional intelligence? How can a leader approach a team during a meeting, for example, where there's a lack of um, within the team, within the organization itself? Yeah, you, 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 you are, what you are asking is very important because indeed, you know, you have very important warnings. When you are in a meeting and you feel that people start to be judgmental, that they are criticizing the organization, that they are resisting again the objectives, that uh, there are uh, there are also you know um, a bit aggressive or submissive. These are all the signals that the leaders must be aware of and immediately diagnose, okay, there is a lack of EQ here. The best way to develop EQ in a team is first to share with the team what you observe, of course, very accurately, and afterwards, what you feel about that. And immediately with, with, with authenticity, you know? Because once you share you what you feel, you are legitimate to ask people What do they feel? And if you put the discussion at the level of the feelings and not the level of the thinkings or the level of the rationality, people then just drop all the resistance to enter in more into more curiosity, something more, more interesting for them. Okay, we may explore here what is going on. And instead of to speak about expectations, you know, we are, we are extremely just keen to first define what do I expect because I have my standards and my norms in my head. I go in my bowel and I make pro my needs, which is a totally different perspective because a need belongs to you and mental is not discussable. While an expectation will be immediately challenged with others expectations so if you want to stop you know this gradation of just aggressive discussion where people are all the time you know in an iron fist game uh, against each other just drop the discussion at the level of the expectations and immediately explore people's needs what would you need to feel more more at ease in this meeting What would you need to feel more respected? What would you need to feel more uh, trustful regarding our capacity to, to reach our objectives, for example? You know, and you're going the needs, not in the expectations. Yeah, ex exactly. Focusing on the on the human more so than the global sense of like the expectation that everybody has that you have to show up with this energy and and commit to a a job or a role or an environment where you are not feeling your needs met. Mm -hmm. So, what would be your key takeaways uh, for a leader that they must emb embody to elevate elevate their EQ? The as takeaway, they must first of all, be connected, not only with, with their mind, they must be connected with their mind and their body. Why? How do we know that we have emotions? Because our body is warning us that we have it. So through our physical signs, we may detect on time that an emotion is popping up and to have 
then this capacity to master this energy popping up by putting the right polarity, plus and minus. So any energy has a polarity. So to take the positive side of this energy popping up, no matter the nature, fear, anger, sadness, or joy, all these energies that our brain is capable to, to generate have a plus and a minus. Secondly, to put this energy at the right intensity. Because what makes a positive energy negative is the wrong intensity. Like, you know, we are radios and, and uh, we are seeking for the right frequency. For so long, we don't have the right vibration and right frequency. What do we hear? It's completely blurred. And on one moment, we find the right vibration and the discussion becomes clear, becomes nice, becomes interesting, even if we disagree. Yeah, everybody feels seen. That is one way to put it in, in, in simple words. Everybody Absolutely. And you are actively listened to and you are actively listening to. So how can an organization elevate their EQ as a whole? Well, um, you know, an emotion is what is influencing your behavior the most. And related to behaviors, companies develop most of the time a value set. You know, in order to develop their culture, organizational culture. And related to each value, they recommend generic behaviors that they would like to see behind any rules or any responsibilities uh, to, uh, to any, any people. So the best way is to develop the exemplarity in the behaviors, in the communication. And therefore, the top-down exemplarity is essential. Mainly in the organization we hear, why should I change when I see the behavior of my manager, of my leader, or my director? Because people are looking at it. And it's incredible, you know, the number of ex-com members that are in charge of a lot of responsibilities that are completely disconnected from people's indeed expectations or needs. And they are not showing up the right behavior, even if they have the best intention. And this is the first thing that I would recommend is really to, have, to, to, to work with any executive committee of each organization to first define the right behaviors and the right value sets in which I would include EQ as value. Thank you so much for all this insightful information. Unfortunately, Dimitri, this is all the time that we have today for uh, this discussion. But summarizing, summarizing everything that we just discussed, um, I would like you know to do like a small recap on amplifying that uh, one of the three uh, key key points or key takeaways that you should uh, be you know, take into account to become uh, or to have a higher EQ or become more emotional intelligent uh, is to rely on authenticity, curiosity and humility and do the self like the self awareness uh, check that uh, corresponds according to your needs. Uh, when you're addressing an organization to start with the expectation and this, then just kind of fall off the expectation and focus on the, the people's the team's need or, or the leader's need um the right energy will always be there as long as there is the right or the correct intensity or vibration that is also something very important uh that emotional em emotions sorry emotions are energy 
and that energy is everything that we are and that as we continue to share and collaborate and bring energy forward we must become self-aware and we must also create these spaces um psychological safety spaces where people are enabled and allowed to show up truly as they are would you like to add anything more no you did it very well thank you very much Amanda. Yeah, thank you so much for coming today to join us uh, at this, uh, just another podcast for the Unlock podcast. Um, we're doing re a really good connections with the previous episodes. So this is super exciting uh, to have to continue going on the conversation. You can always find more information on unlock.org, U-N-L-O-Q.org. And to our listeners, stay tuned as we continue to unlock human potential.